Very good morning, students. I am Dr. B. Anita Kumari, Associate Professor of School of Management Studies, Wales Institute of Science, Technology, and Advanced Studies, Chennai. In today's class, we are going to see the sale of Books Act 1930. It is a very interesting topic. So, in this topic, we are going to discuss the following headings Essential elements of a contract of sale, different between sales and agreement to sales, different between sales and higher purchase. Condition and warranties, and different between this condition and warranty. Unpaid seller, then rights of unpaid seller, caveat emptor, and goods. What are the different uh, goods are available? Then we are also going to discuss some case studies. Let us move on to the topic. So, before starting this, let's see the objectives of our sale of goods act to state the meaning of sale of contract to know the various types of condition and warranties to identify the essential elements of sale of contract to understand the rights of unpaid seller to acquire the knowledge of sales agreement higher purchase and kvd tender history of sale of goods act actually the sale of goods act introduced in our indian contract at 1872 as per section 7 but uh, due to some modifications so there was a special act enacted for sale of goods act there of 1930 so the sale of goods act is 1930 which deals with a lot of topics like rights of unpaid seller who is unpaid seller what is called agreement to sale what is called higher purchase what is the difference between sales and agreement to sales what is the difference between sales and the higher purchase uh, what are the difference between condition and warranties? Who is called as, you know, uh, what is called the uh, KV tempter? So all the things is discussed under the uh, topic is called sale of goods act. So definition in this act, unless there is anything recognized in subject context. So who is called as a buyer? Buyer is the person who buy, buys or agree to buy a goods. Delivery means voluntary transfer of portion from one person to another. Goods are said to be in a deliverable state. When they are in a such state, the buyer would under contract be bound to take delivery of them. So, what is first of all, we should understand the difference between customer and consumer. Customer is the person one who buy the product, whereas consumer is the person one who utilize the product. Okay, for example, in your home the provisions and grocery items might be uh, purchased by the parent but it the person uh, the persons in the family they might be utilizing some particular brand the person who is utilizing the particular brand is called as a consumer whereas the person who is purchasing a product is called as a customer so again here i have mentioned the definition section 4 subsection 1 of the indian sale of goods act 1930 defines the contract of sale of goods in the following manner. Your contract of sales goods is a contract whereby the seller transfer or agree to transfer the property in a goods to the buyer for a price. So under the sale of goods act, one person will be selling a goods, the another person will be buying it by way of returning money. That is for sale of goods act. So here two things is getting in, uh, interchanged. From seller point of view, the seller is exchanging the product from buyer we are getting a money so the term contract of sale of goods that in generic terms it also includes sales and agreement to sales so we know what is called sales and agreement to sales so what is called sales when one person selling a product and receiving a cash from the buyer is called as a sales whereas agreement to sales in the sense which is occur in a future sales is a present one whereas agreement to sell is a future so in future if you want to sell something for that you are taking any kind of order uh, or for that you are getting any kind of advance that is called as an agreement to sale. These are the essential elements of contract of sale. This is very much important. So there are two parties in the sale of goods are buyer and seller. As I told you that seller will be exchanging the goods and buyer will be paying money for it. And goods. So here there are three specific goods involved in this. What are the three goods? Existing goods, future goods and contingent goods. So what is called existing goods? Existing goods in the sense, the goods which is ready to transfer. That is called existing goods. For example, if you are going to any kind of a grocery shop, 
if you want to buy something if the goods is available immediately you are paying money and getting from the particular uh, seller in the sense that is called existing goods whereas future goods in the sense which will be occur in a future that means you can take some crops or uh, you may take some you know farming products or whatever it is okay initially you will be paying a money if you want ragi or uh, pali or something else so it will be a uh, crop it after uh, you know all the things get over you will get it that is called as a future goods then what is called contingent goods so contingent goods in the sense which may or may not happen for example if you want to deliver the goods if you want to import or export the goods from foreign sometime it may or may not happen due to the condition of law and due to the calamity or whatever it is that is called contingent goods so anyhow in this sale of goods sir we are going to see there are lot of varieties of goods are available we are going to see with the best examples then price so what is called price consideration so in indian contract at 1872 in the, under the essential elements of contract also we have seen condition is one of the main aspect for any kind of a contract so under the sale of goods act here price only is considered as a one of the benefit okay so transfer of general property so it is not like a bailment or pledge so in the last class we have seen the bailment and pledge in that class we have seen clearly that only the portion of the goods will be transferred not the ownership whereas under the sale of goods act once you pay the money immediately the ownership is transferred to the particular buyer okay for example you are visiting one shop you want to buy horlicks or something else once you pay your money immediately the ownership is transferred that means once you pay your money the seller will be hand overing the product to the customer's hand here the ownership is transferred immediately essential elements of a valid contract so here in the sale of goods that also we have to fulfill all the essential elements of a contract a contract of a sale may be absolute or conditional so what is called absolute or conditional absolute in the sense without any kind of a conditions you the particular goods will be in a nature of delivery that is called absolute whereas conditional in the sense sometime the goods may carry some conditions maybe it might be in a portion to you know uh, complete the finishing or something else we are going to see in future so these are all is called as a absolute and conditional sales so this both absolute and conditional sales also consider under the sale of goods act so this is one of the case study i have mentioned here johnson versus aldrich so johnson versus aldrich this is the one of the best case study which is related to the sale of goods act so johnson he wants to sell a cattle and he is expecting barley with the cash from the aldrich so already we have seen under the essential elements of contract under the topic is called consideration uh, whenever we transfer a goods we expect cash under the sales of sale of goods act but in this case he is expecting cash along with the barley as a benefit return from aldrich so this is do you think is it a valid contract or what contract is a valid contract why because even though he expects barley barley he also need a cash so here cash is entering into the contract so it is valid so students can you able to understand under the sale of goods act when one person transferring any goods in return you have to receive a cash that is called sale of goods act it is not like a barter system you know what is called barter system right uh, in tamil they used to say pandaga marchum murai so uh, what they will do if i hand over any goods the other person will be giving a goods in return back for example so previously in traditional days uh, you know uh, if i want to sell a rice i will get a doll from the another person so whatever product i have i will give it to them whatever product they have they will give back to me that is called barter system where the goods is getting exchanged from both the parties that is called barter system but, but in sale of goods act it is not applicable under the sale of goods act whenever you transfer a goods you must receive a cash that is very much important different between sales and agreement to sales uh, already we have discussed what is called sales and under, what is called agreement to sales sales where a contract of a sale property goods is immediately transferred the ownership is transfers immediately to the buyer whereas under the agreement to sales here the buyer or customer will be contacting the seller he or she will be giving an advance and he will book their goods 
in future it will sell that is called agreement to sell okay so these are the basic difference between the sales and agreement to sales so this is a very much important question so these are the basic difference meaning so what is the meaning of sales when a contract of sales the exchange of goods uh, for money consideration take place immediately whereas here it will take in a future that we should understand it is specified it is a future oriented contract then what is the nature it is a absolute in nature already i told you what is called absolute absolute in the sense without any condition the product is in a nature of transfer or delivery that is called absolute whereas conditional in nature conditional in the sense for example i i am going to sarvana store example i am telling you i am going to uh, sarvana store furniture shop there i am giving i have see i want to buy one pot okay i am seeing lot of pot whatever is there i need a king size pot i am seeing lot of pot but uh, i am not satisfied with the pot design whatever is available in the shop then i asked the shopkeeper can you give me some other uh, sample catalog of your pots design uh, because i am looking for something different then he uh, he has shown me the some catalog i saw that so i liked one catalog then i uh, one catalog in the catalog then i have given an order he said it will ma'am it will take you another 10 days uh, for delivery i said okay then i have given an advance that is called agreement to sale which is going to occur in the future which carries some condition in nature so the agreement to sell carries the condition then types of contract it is a executor contract what you may executed when one person doing his part the another person also for example the seller is giving a product the customer is giving a cash that's it completed executed means completed when both the parties have completed their respective promise is called as a executor contract whereas executory contract either one party or two party yet to complete their respective promise that is called a executory contract transfer of risk risk here transfer of risk is high what do you mean by this for example if the seller hand over the goods to the buyer then he become a owner of the goods that's it then he has to take care of the risk whatever it carries whereas under the agreement to sell still the product is getting delivered the risk is associated with the seller why because uh, the customer is asking some time as well as the seller is also asking some time to deliver the product till the time the goods ownership is with the seller so the transfer of risk is nil or no or less under the agreement to sell title in sale the title of goods uh, transfer to the buyer with the transfer of goods immediately whereas here it will occur in a future it will remain the same agreement to sale still uh, still the customer pays the full amount of the product the product will be with the seller's hand okay next the consequ consequences of subsequent loss or damage to the goods it is responsibility of the buyer for example once uh, i went to one shop i bought some goods i am just i'm taking the goods to my home uh, at the time of uh, you know uh, traveling uh, un uh, unfortunately i met an accident or so some minor accident occurred in the sense if the goods is damaged ultimately it will falls on the buyer head why because here under the sale of goods at the ownership is transferred immediately to the buyer so once the buyer buys the product in the hand then he is responsible for anything may happen whereas under the agreement to sale it is going to occur in a future where if any kind of a losses or damages are caused to the uh particular goods the seller is responsible tax get gst is charged at the time of sale no tax is levied because you are giving only advance right so under agreement to sales you are giving only advance at the time of delivery only you are giving a money full money whereas under the sales you are paying the full amount immediately okay so automatically gst falls in that the nature it is absolute in nature we have seen this so this is a these are all the difference between agreement to sales and agreement to sales next one is uh, sales and higher purchase so what is called higher purchase so in previous slide we have seen the difference between sales and agreement to sales in this topic we are seeing sales and higher purchase so what is called higher purchase higher purchase in the sense instead of paying money in full sum manner you are taking the product in a emi mode what is called emi mode emi mode so easy mode installment right 
So what do you mean by this? Uh, mostly all the vehicles, two wheelers. Uh, nowadays, uh, the home appliance also uh, can be taken with the help of EMI mode. There are some shops are giving with 0% EMI mode. That is a concept is called down payment. What is called down payment? For example, if you want to buy a TV, Sony TV, which is worth up 60,000, you don't have a cash. So the particular shopkeeper is giving uh, uh, some special features like you can take that product in a EMA mode also. Okay, so with a 0% down payment, if he says that with the 0% down payment in the sense, you are cost of the TV. For example, if the cost of TV is 1 lakh in the sense, the cost of the TV is will be divided into the month of installment. It might be a 12 months or 6 months according to your uh convenience as well as as per the contract okay then the part of the amount if for example if you are taking this one lakh tv for six month uh, ema mode in the sense every month you have to pay uh the some part of the amount which is divided by uh, one lakh divided by six okay so whereas some uh if you are taking any kind of a vehicle or some uh, two wheelers four wheelers or some other uh, heavy vehicle whatever it is in uh, emi mode Initially, they will ask you to give us some down payment. So what is called down payment? The Some small portion of amount to be given at the time of taking a product, the remaining amount will be carried forward as a EMI. Sometimes without interest, the EMI will falls on the buyer's head or sometimes it will also contain some interest. So you should understand the three concepts under the, under the higher purchase. So one is, zero percent uh, zero percent down payment you can take a product okay the whole sales price will be divided as per as per you are convenient as per the contract in the monthly wise whereas some part of the amount will be given as a down payment with a zero percent interest okay whereas some percent part of the uh, down payment will be given along with the interest of the emi so these are the three kind of conditions will be applied for the higher purchase so let's see the difference between this uh, sales and a higher purchase to higher purchase. So parties involved, the contract of sale involves two parties, buyers and seller. Whereas here, the contract of a higher purchase involves higher purchaser and higher vendor. So who is higher purchases? For example, I'm taking a scooter uh, in a higher purchase mode. Here, here my mode in the sense here, I am a higher purchaser. And the person, the vendor who is giving a product is called as a higher vendor. Then uh, governing act, the contract of sales go, uh, is governed by the 1930, the contract of higher purchase governed under, under the Higher Purchase Act 1972. Please make a note of it. Then transfer of ownership here under the Sale of Goods Act, the transfer ship is transferred, sorry, the ownership is transferred immediately once the buyer pays the money. Whereas under the uh, Higher Purchase mode, it is not like that. Until otherwise the customer pays the full amount of the product, the ownership of the product it will be with the particular seller only. Can you able to understand? For example, in last uh, example I told you, I'm buying I'm buying a Sony TV which is cost around a one lakh in six month installment mode in the sense. Unless I complete the six lakh, the last installment. For example, every month I need to pay. I am taking the TV for five months installment in the sense with 0% down uh, interest and 0, per, uh, 0 down payment in the sense, 1 lakh divided by 5 months. So every month I need to pay 20,000 in this case. Okay. So uh, every month I'm paying 20,000, 20,000, 20,000. Till I complete the fifth month, the last 20,000, the ownership of the goods will be with the seller only. Once you complete your all the installment, then only the ownership will be transferred to the buyer. So far, uh, you know very well, whenever you take any kind of a vehicle, you will be uh, uh, the particular uh, showroom, the car showroom or a two-wheeler showroom, they will be handovering the two keys, right? Two keys. If you are paying the whole amount, uh, full cash, in this, they will be handovering two keys to you. Whereas if you are taking the key, uh, if you are taking the vehicle to by high purchase mode in the sense, the one key will be, uh, will be handovering to the uh, buyer, whereas the another key will be withhold by the, the financial person or the person who is giving a uh, installment, maybe Bajaj insurance, you know, right? Bajaj uh, financial institution, some people will be giving some EMI. So the another key will be withhold by them. So until otherwise you complete the full settlement, it will not hand over to you. Once you complete the last uh, uh, settlement, then they will be handovering the key. Okay, next, termination of a contract. 
the in case of sales the buyer cannot terminate the contract un unless it bound to pay the price of the goods because here the ownership transfer ownership is transferred immediately to the buyer so there is no way of termination of a contract okay whereas in the higher purchase the hirer may if he so likes or uh, terminate the contract by returning the goods to the owner without the liability to pay remaining installment so what do you mean with this i bought some product but the particular product is having some damages some technical errors or technical failure it is not uh, working properly in the sense i can return the goods to the seller then i can come out from the particular installment mode also or sometime they will return back some other new goods then risk of insolvency in in case of sales the seller take the risk of any loss resulting from the insolvency of the buyer so what do you mean insolvency uh when he is not in a position to pay a money okay buyer so already we have seen what is called sales when the ownership is transferred immediately to the buyer once he pays the full amount that is called as a sales so in case if anything happens to the buyer if in case in case if the buyer is become insolvent also no issues because as a seller he already received the money so in no way it's going to affect the seller right whereas under the higher purchase it is not like that because we have given a product based on some higher purchase mode emi mode till the emi uh, get over it is a responsibility of the uh, buyer to pay a money if anything happens to the buyer then the ultimately ultimately the risk is falls on the seller so higher purchase vendor so what he has to do either he has to seize the proper goods what he has given to the buyer or he he has to approach some other nomination nominee or family members of the person to get a uh, remaining installment amount or to return back the product transfer of the title of the goods here we have seen uh, the transfer of a title immediately uh, transfer under the sale of goods are whereas here till he completes the last installment the ownership and the title of the goods will be uh, held up with the vendor the payment of a price the price is paid immediately whereas the price is paid in a installment mode under the higher purchase mode so this is very much important question students so so whenever uh, you study the sale of goods act you should know the basic concept next topic what we are going to see is stipulation condition essential of the condition so what is called stipulation the stipulation in the contract of sale with reference to goods which are subject thereof may be condition of warranty stipulation means some additional condition okay condition is a stipulation essential to the main purpose of contract for example uh in this topic we are going to see what is called condition and what is called warranty so what is called condition whenever a buyer approaches the seller sometime from buyer point of view they will uh, they will raise some condition okay for example i want to buy one sari i for that purpose i am going some textile shop Uh, i want to buy uh, around 30000 worth of saree in the sense i will be asking lot of questions like just like that i will not buy i will be asking the seller whether if i wash the saree it will fade off fade off or uh, whether the saree what how, how to wash it so i will be asking lot of questions even the seller will be giving some condition so what kind of a condition he will be giving like you should not do hand wash or washing machine wash is supposed to be carried out with a dry wash or a shampoo wash so like that conditions also will be given by the seller side so being a buyer we should follow the condition whatever is given by the seller if you are not going to follow if we are doing as it is whatever we think because of that if the product get damaged then you can't able to claim the compensation can you understand for example i bought a 30000 worth of saree at the time of buying sari itself the seller has given clear condition to me that you should do only dry wash you should not put it in a washing machine and then you should not put uh, you should not soak you should not soak that uh, particular cloth for more than uh, you know half an hour something okay it's supposed to be uh, you know uh, hang, hanged under only the shadow so like that he has given lot of instruction but what i did due to my personal duties and due to my personal heavy work what i did i i just i put my uh, cloth in washing machine that's it it got something damaged when i take this particular cloth to the seller do you think i i may will get a uh, compensation for this no why because the seller has given condition to me you have to do and don't the following things 
so students whenever we buy any kind of a product we have to study the some catalog whatever is attached with the packet with whatever may be the product you buy sometime on the packet itself they might be mentioned do and don't whereas if you buy some home appliance some other goods in the sense they will be providing certain rules and regulation do and don'ts to be followed by the customer like that they will be given some instruction we have to follow that if you are not going to follow we uh, then because of that if any kind of a damage is occurs we could not able to claim the compensation or we can't able to claim the warranty or guarantee whatever it is okay so essence of a contract essential to the main purpose of a contract causes ir uh, it irreparable damage to the agreed party agreed party may resign the contract or recover the damage so essentials of contract if you want to uh, going to put any kind of a condition first you should know the purpose of a contract first then uh, who is going to get a damages everything we have to look on so these are the basic difference between the condition and warranties so first of all we should know the difference between condition and guarantee so what is called guarantee and what is called warranty so guarantee is given some part of the product product okay whereas warranty is given for the duration of the product for lifetime of a product for example if you are buying a fridge if you are buying a fridge so uh, guarantee will be given for the compressor for cooling or something okay whereas uh, guarantee will not be given for the handling of a fridge that handle and then door then then small small trays whatever we are keeping the vegetable tray for that and they will not give you guarantee it means that you have to use use it you have to handle it properly with almost care okay whereas warranty is given for 10 years or 15 years or 20 years depends upon the brand depends upon the company and depends upon the uh, cost of the product and quality or whatever it is so within the particular year if anything happens some service free service or something will be done that is called as warranty so can you able to understand one more example i will give you um, if you are buying uh, this one mixi maximum the guarantee will be given to the motor of the mixi not for the jar not for the handle not for the uh, switching things and all they will be providing the guarantee will be given only part of the product whereas warranty is given for some duration period for life of the product in the life of the product if you have a warranty card you can claim the uh, service something uh, within the particular period in that also some condition of this so condition of this so what is called condition it is a stipulation it is a stip a stipulation means which is additional okay it is an additional to the main purpose of a contract the breach which gives the right to repudiate a contract and claim the damages so whenever you, people are entering in a contract especially under the sale of goods act as a seller as well as a buyer they will be uh, having certain condition that has to be fulfilled okay so under the warranties as i told it is a collateral to the main purpose collateral means some of the additional uh, that means warranty you you should not ask warranty for all the product okay so the seller knows for what product they have to give warranty for what are the products they do not okay so the breach of uh, sorry it is a stipulation collateral to the main purpose of a contract the breach of uh, which give rise to claim the damages but not the right to reject the goods for example if anything happens to the product if the particular product is having 5 years warranty in the sense within this 5 years you can get a claim warranty benefit whereas it is not like that condition is not like that so condition is a stipulation essential to the main purpose of the contract so see here some example i have given here x want to purchase a horse from y which can run at the speed of 50 km per hour y pointing out at particular horse says this horse will suit for you so x buys the horse but later on he find that the horse can run at speed of only 30 km per hour so in this situation the breach of condition occurs it means that the stipulation may be seller from the very basis of the contract so what is the example here yes he wants to buy one horse the particular horse supposed to run the minimum kilometer of 50 kilometers per hour so he approached the horse seller why 
why specifically he has uh, given one horse and said that you take this horse it will run more uh, minimum of 50 kilometers or more than whatever it is it will fulfill to your condition by believing the words of yax uh, y by believing the words of uh, the seller y yax he bought the horse but later on he came to know the horse could be able to run the speed of only 30 kilometers per hour so in this example the condition is breached condition is not fulfilled so what he can do he can climb the x he can return the horse and climb the money or the x he can return the horse he can get some other horse so this kind of a climb so condition is very much important for any kind of a goods if the condition is either if the condition is given by the seller based on the words given by the seller if the buyer buy any kind of a product if the condition is not fulfilled as a buyer we have a full right either to get back our money back or return that's the reason the uh, in online purchase also they used to say uh, money back cash back uh, condition is a cash, cash back warranty warrant so these kind of a conditions uh, and warranty terms and all we used to hear in the online and purchase also so i told you what is called warranty warranty is a stipulation it means some additional collateral to the main purpose of a contract so whenever we buy a product we used to ask them right whether this product is carries warranty so it is a some additional collateral given to any kind of a product so uh, the breach of warranty is doesn't mean that a breach of contract that means for example if the particular product carries the five years of warranty if the particular product anything happens uh, uh, the pro product is uh, you know uh, working smoothly up to five years but after five years if anything happens the warranty you can't able to climb because the warranty is given only for five years right so in this case so what will happen the warranty uh, breach the completion of warranty will not affect on the sale of a goods so these are the basic difference between condition and warranty basic distinction condition and warranty value yeah condition is a stipulation which is essential to the main purpose of contract condition is the main purpose of contract see whenever you buy any kind of a product as a seller you have to give a clear communication to the buyer what are the things you have to follow what the, what are the things you have to do and don't okay whereas warranty is a additional collateral to the main purpose of a contract whereas under the right the aggrieved party can able to repudiate repudiate means cancel the aggrieved party can cancel the contract in case if the condition is not fulfilled by the uh seller whereas here the aggrieved party can claim the damages only in case of breach of warranty in the particular period if anything happen he can't able to cancel the contract but he can claim the damages under the warranty then treatment a breach of condition may be treated as a breach of warranty because i bought one product the seller has given some condition i use the product uh but something happened that damage has happened in the sense here breach of warranty occurred that is breach of warranty cannot affect the contract so some of the examples given here linova standard terms of condition sale all the payment should be made by account payee check or dd in favor of linova computer in case of any check is dishonored a service charge of rupees 1000 rupees plus service tax will be charged the statutory form if applicable must be issued in advance as tax is charged late payment fees uh, of 2% per month will be charged in case of delay in the payment of the outstanding invoice value so these kind of uh, conditions this is a small example so like this there are certain conditions will be framed by the seller side same way here uh, warranty also is given the product of warranty is for only 2 years the battery and charge warranty is only for 1 year damage of screen is not comes under the warranty if any part of the damage then it will be replaced no charges will be bearer by the customer at the time of warranty period so uh, during the warranty period if anything happens the customers can able to claim then he no need to claim uh, pay any uh, amount from customer side this is called warranty so i hope so you could understand the difference between condition see the conditions here this condition is different whereas this warranty is different okay next here also this microwave uh, terms and condition goods once sold not be taken back or exchange 
all tax either existing that may be imposed assessed in the future this shall be paid by the buyer the amount of invoice is payable as stipulated time for any delay in a payment interest 24% per annum will be charged from the invoice paid until the amount of invoice is paid then all warranties and service obligation are manufactured liability and responsibility so same way some examples also given here now we are moving on to the next important topic condition and the warranty types there are two types of condition warranty express or implied so what is called express which are which are expressed provided in the contract there are they are said to be expressed when at all when the parties they are interested in the contract that means at the time of entering in the contract itself from seller point of view clear instructions clear instruction about the condition or usage of the product handling of a product demo of a product will be given that's the reason whenever you buy some product home appliance product demo persons will come and they will explain you you should not do this you should do this washing machine if you buy this you should not use this kind of a uh, washing powder uh, you should not put the overload so like that you will giving some uh, instructions right so like that the oral expression uh, the oral conditions will be coming under transparent conditions will be coming under express the implied condition warranty sometimes even though seller communicates certain conditions it carries certain uh, ethics and certain uh, things at the time when you buy a product let's see in one by one the implied condition warranties are those which are presumed by the law to be presented in the contract they have not been put into the express words okay they will they no need to say it is already implied indirectly okay condition as to title sales by description section 15 condition as to quality or fitness section 16 condition as to merchantability section 16 subsection 2 condition implied by customs fitness for a particular purpose a uh, purpose may be annexed by the usage of trade sales by sample condition as to wholesale let's see one by one so what is called condition as to title the seller has the right to sell uh, then sales by title description let's see one by one so here we have given a brief uh, again the types of condition the types of warranty so this one we have to see the types of warranty uh, warranty as to quiet position warranty is a freedom of enterprise uh, warranty as to quiet and or fitness by usage of trade warranty to display disclose the dangerous nature of the goods express condition warranty these are the these are those which are parties agrees expressly whereas example cash to be paid on delivery of the goods implied and warranty condition so number 1 condition as to title so what is called condition as to title there are three implied condition on the part of the seller regarding the title of the goods in case of a sale he has right to sell the goods in case of agreement to sale the seller will have a right to sell the goods at the time of when the property is to pass the buyer shall have enjoy the quiet portion of the goods goods shall be free from any charge in purpose condition as to title what is called condition as to title uh, in case if the uh, term of contract is sales in the sense that ownership of the goods the title of one title means the ownership of the goods okay has to be transferred immediately to the buyer under the sale of goods act whether a buyers under the agreement to sales after certain period once the order has taken once the advance has taken uh, in the particular the period all the arrangements uh, will be made then that time only the title will be transferred sales by description what do you mean by sales by description where there is a contract for the sale of a goods by the description there is the implied condition that the goods shall be correspond to the same description so what do you mean by that for example if you are buying any kind of a product in that product they have mentioned uh, this product is contain this 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 product contain this the particular product is having uh, you know for example they have mentioned like uh, you are buying one doll udder doll in the package they mentioned that this is a 1 kg of udder doll after you bought the package you are checking the weight it's supposed to be the same as per the description whatever mentioned on the package okay but at the time of your checking only 900 and uh, 950 grams only is there in the sense then you can put a case you can suit uh, against the seller or you can ask the client 
Do you understand? That is called sales by description. Whatever description has been mentioned on the package of the goods, the particular goods has to fulfill that condition. That to, it's supposed to be the same. Whatever description mentioned on the package of the goods, it has to be same of the product, whatever you buy. Next one is sales by sample. Sales by sample in sense, you are going to one shop, you are seeing, uh, whenever you go some grocery shop, you'll be seeing a lot of drum with a lot of varieties of rice. Okay, weekly rice, rice also, pony rice, lot of rice varieties will be there. One rice will be one cage, they will charge 50 rupees, another rice maybe the 100 rupees, another rice will be 70 rupees, whatever it is. You sample, you bought one rice because initially uh, in our home, what our uh, mothers will do, so they will not buy the wholesome of rice as it is. If they know brand very well, if they are, you know, uh, if they add it with one particular brand, if they know, if they are satisfied with one particular brand in the sense, they will go to the shop, they will say, uh, simply, I need this uh, brand. For example, if they are buying 20 kg, 25 kg of rice, uh, they will ask, uh, I need Sole Mail brand, I, a Sivaji brand rice, and then I will ask some other brand rice. Like, okay, they will quote the brand name, they will buy a rice, okay. In case, if, in case if you're going to change the brand or if you want to buy some other new one, or if you first time you are going to try some samples in the sense, what will you do? Initially, you will not buy 25 kgs of rice, you will not use it. Initially, initially you will ask some small uh, sample from the seller. Okay, once you buy it, you once you utilize it, if you are satisfied with the sample, then you will give a bulk order. Okay, the bulk order should be corresponded or similar to the sample what you have taken that is called implied condition can you understand this is implied because the seller has given one sample i use the sample i satisfy with satisfy with the particular sample now i am giving a bulk order in the sense the bulk order should be resemblance to the uh, sample what i have taken it should not carry any kind of a defect that is called sales by sample sales by sample and description the sale is by sample as well as description in sense. It is not sufficient that the bulk of the goods correspond with the sample if the goods don't correspond with the description. Description means what? For example, if you buy this, say, for example, you are buying rice. They are giving, uh, they are giving instruction, condition, I'm uh, sorry, condition. The seller is giving condition. See, this is a new varieties of, uh, uh, you know, uh, rice. So what you have to do, you have to soak the rice minimum of half an hour before to cook. This kind of a condition is given by the seller point of view. So, okay, so seller has given clear instructions, sir, please soak the rice minimum, or madam, please soak the rice minimum of half an hour before you start to cook. Then only, as well as add up a water, for example, usually our Ma, uh, our mothers, what they will, mothers and women, what they will do, they will uh, take a proportion of uh, rice with the water. One glass of rice in the sense, they will take up a two glass of water. Okay, in some shop, the seller will be giving certain condition related to the rice like this. If you are going to take a one glass of water, uh, don't put only the two glass of water. Put some half glass of water extra because this kind of uh, rice, you know, it will. Uh, it will come, it will, once it cooks, it will come up well. Okay, as well as you have to uh, soak it for half an hour. Like this, they are giving some description. Now, I bought the product. I bought the product. I I have done whatever condition is given by the seller. Whatever he said, I soak the rice for half an hour. Okay, I add up, I added up extra half an hour, half tumbler water. Then also, if the rice is not getting uh, cooked properly, and then ask something else in the sense, they can, I can ask the particular seller. That is called sales by sample and description. Then condition, this, this one we have seen. Next one is condition as to merchantability. What is called merchantability? Merchantability in the sense, where the goods bought by the description from the seller who deals in such goods, there is an implied condition that the goods shall be in the form of merchantable quality, provided that if the buyer has examined the goods, that shall be, uh, no implied condition regardless defect of for example basic whenever you buy the this one iron box what is what is called merchantability the if i use the iron box on the cloth i should able to uh, feel it i could able to see that 
my clothes is ironed properly it is in a neat form okay another example i am uh, i i bought one fridge what is the purpose of buying fridge for chillness of water for keeping all the things in a fresh manner to keep uh, to keep uh, you know warm temperature warm temperature or temperature of cold and the freezer the i should have ice cube etc etc these are all the things but after i bought the fridge i could not able to feel i could not able to satisfy with the product performance that is called merchantability can you understand condition as to merchantability in the sense the product name the product what you are buying that itself carries certain performance that performance has to be fulfilled do you understand if you are buying ac for what purpose you are buying ac to keep a room temperature in a cool mode as well as if you are increasing the temperature you should uh, feel it. too much cold if you are decreasing the temperature uh so no, oh, sorry if you are decreasing the temperature you should uh, feel the cool mode whereas if you are increasing the uh, temperature is the the coolness chillness will reduce right so like that you should feel the that merchantability of a product that is the performance of the product that is called merchantability can you understand that merchantability in the sense performance of the product name that particular product what you are buy the performance supposed to be the same implied conditions implied warranty of quiet position and implied warranty that the buyers shall have i enjoy the quiet position of the goods and implied warranty freedom from the encumbrance that means an implied warranty that goods shall be free from any charges see implied warranty buyers shall have any enjoy the quiet position of the see for example i bought a fridge they have, they have given a 10 years of warranty if i have the warranty card it means in the sense i should be in a position to utilize it that is called quiet position as well as it freedom from encumbrance a freedom from encumbrance in the sense i should not feel any uh, discomfort i should not feel any kind of uh, you know some struggle to use the warranty for example uh, within this 10 years some problem happen in a washing machine in the sense with help of warranty card i should be in a position to utilize the warranty i should make a call to the particular customer care of the particular brand i should uh, i should be in a position to ask them i should be in a position to utilize it that is called implied warranty of freedom from encumbrance implied warranty annexed by usage of trade an implied warranty as to quality or fitness for a particular purpose may be annexed by the usage of trade what do you mean by this an implied warranty as to quality of fitness see they have given a warranty so people are buying product in the sense they will see two or three important things first they will see the brand of the product the brand carries a quality as well as the price okay as well as the warranty of the product the guarantee of the product so whenever people are seeing whenever the customers are seeing a warranty it means that the warranty is connected can uh, annex annexed with the trade that has to be fulfilled this one uh, see here the most common type of a implied warranty yes uh, want a warranty of merchantability means the seller promised that the product will do what is supposed to do for example a car will run a toaster will toast i told you know for what purpose we are buying toaster to toast the bread if the toast if we, once you buy the toaster once you put the bread inside that if it is not getting toast it means that failure of merchantability do you understand merchantability means merchantability in the sense for what purpose you are buying a product the purpose itself is not getting fulfilled that is called merchantability failure so same thing let's move on to say so see uh, see students we are seeing the all the aspects of sale of goods at in this topic so i almost i almost covered all the topics whatever is coming under sale of goods at if you view this a uh, video you could able to understand all the aspects of seller food set so as of now we have seen what is called sales uh, who is called seller who is called buyer what is called agreement to sale what is called higher purchase what is the difference between sales and agreement to sale what is the difference between sales and higher purchase okay what is called condition what is called warranty what are the different types of condition and warranties under that there are different types are there right all the things we have seen now uh, let's move on to the next topic is unpaid seller 
So you know who is called seller? Seller is a person who is exchanging goods and receiving a money. Then who is called unpaid seller? So unpaid seller is the person who yet to receive a money from the sell buyer. Okay, he is the seller to whom whole of the price is not paid. All conditional payment, bill of exchange, promise note, as check or whatever it is. So for example, I am the seller. Okay, I am the seller. One buyer, uh, one customer visited my shop. He bought one goods worth of ten thousand rupees. He has given only eight thousand rupees. He had to give me remaining two thousand rupees. In this case, I am unpaid sale. Condition number one. So, if the whole sum of the price is not paid, in next example, same. One customer visited my shop. He has taken a product worth of ten thousand. He is a. I I know him very well. Due to the emergency purpose, I have given a product without getting any money. So in this second example, I have not received any any single price single price from the single amount from the particular buyer. So in the first example, I received only eight thousand. I had to give a I had to receive a two thousand. Whereas in the second example, I had to receive full lump sum of some sum of price. Third example, the third example, the buyer has given a some Conditional payment, maybe the bill of exchange, our promise remote, our check, or whatever it is. So in this, until otherwise the particular check credited in my account, until otherwise the bill of exchange is transferred to my account, until otherwise the cash is transferred to my account, till the time I'm called as a unpaid seller. Do you understand? Then we can we can we can say our online payment also. Sometimes, if we do net payment, it will not credit within the credited immediately. Sometimes it will take some time till the time the particular seller is called as an unpaid seller. So, can you understand what is called unpaid seller? Unpaid seller is the person who yet to receive money from the seller, uh, money from the buyer of the product what he bought, either wholly or partly, or maybe in the conditional payment. That is called as an unpaid seller. I hope so. You can understand what is called unpaid seller. So features of unpaid seller: uh, seller must sell the goods on cash basis and must be unpaid sometime due to the cash transaction become a due in some duty. Seller must be unpaid either wholly or partly. The desired period has expired. Sometime a uh, one person uh, took a product. He said within three days I will give you the remaining amount, but ah. Uh, Three days got expired. Then also he has not paid the money. So then I am called as a unpaid seller. Seller must not refuse to accept the payment. Sometimes he is. I I have given a clear instruction to the buyer that I am expecting one. Uh, one I am accepting only cash. But he said I will give you the check. Please, I am having a check. I will come and give you the money later on. Right now I don't have a money. In this case, the seller I am refusing to accept the payment. That situation also I am called as an unpaid seller. Then where the price paid through the negotiable instrument I told you right. Uh, for example, A uh, sells his bike to B for sixty thousand and receive a check for the price. Till this time the seller will only be called as a seller. But when subsequently the check is dishonored, when the check is dishonored because at the moment when I am depositing cash uh, check in my account. The check is dishonored, and this is what I could not able to recover the sixty thousand. So in this situation, I am called as a unpaid seller. Okay. So rights of unpaid seller. Now we are going to see certain rights of unpaid seller. Uh, let's see in detail. So this is uh, rights of unpaid seller diagram. You have to make a note of it. So rights of unpaid seller against the goods, against the buyer personally. Against the goods, where the property in goods has passed to the buyer. So where the goods has passed to the buyer in the sense, here I have given a position of the goods, ownership of the goods, position of the goods to the buyer. He had to give me the money. Okay, here ownership is transferred from the seller to the buyer. The seller yet to receive a money from the buyer. That. Situation is falls under where the property in goods has passed to the buyer. It carries three types. One is right of claim, right of stoppage in transit, right of resale. Three topics. 
next one where the property in goods has not to the has not passed to the buyer here the buyer he has visited my shop he has given a order he has not given a money so the portion of the goods is with me only so it's sort of like agreement to sell okay the portion of the goods is with me only i comes to know that he no more he is going to give a money so in such situation what kind of a category will be withholding delivery lion stoppage in transit and resale so under the rights of unpaid seller another topic is against the buyer personally suit for price suit for damages suit for interest here against the buyer personally in the sense the buyer has taken a product no uh, he is not allowed to repay for my uh, queries when the seller asking money he is not at all replaying in such case what are the actions can be taken by the seller either he can suit for price he can suit for damages and he can suit for interest right of resale so now first we are seeing this right of resale the first topic you can able to view this right you can able to view this where the property in a goods has passed to the buyer right of resale where the goods are the perishable in nature when the buyer does not pay a price what what do you mean by perishable in nature when the goods are in a you know when in a, when it is in a portion uh, which is easily can be destroyed maybe like i can take fruits vegetables flowers these are all is called as a perishable in nature so what i can do for example one person has taken a you know lump sum of fruits which carries a 1000 rupees one uh, what to say one uh, buyer this time my shop he bought he is a you know some of a retailer he took uh, around 2000 rupees what of uh, fruits from my wholesale shop he has given only 500 rupees he has taken a product because this is the condition where the property of the goods passed to the buyer right so he has taken a product he has given only 500 he had, he had to give me 1500 rupees in this case okay since the goods are in perishable in nature i am asking the money why you are not paying 1500 rupees he said i am sorry i could not able to pay so what i will do i will resell the product okay i will go and uh, just take the product and then i will resell to somebody else that is called right to resell right of stoppage goods in transit the right of stoppage in transit means the right to stoppage the goods while they are in transit to regain the portion and to retain them until the price is paid the essential features of the stoppage transit is that goods should be in a portion of the someone interviewer between the seller and buyer the unpaid seller can exercise the right of stoppage in transit if the seller has parted with the portion of the goods the buyer has not taken the portion of the goods the buyer has become an insolvent listen in this case uh, one person one uh, customer is staying in trichy the seller i am in chennai he has given a order worth of 1 lakh rupees okay by believing this i have he has given only 10000 rupees as a advance by believing this i have transferred the goods to the carrier carrier means the courier person or some uh, you know the person who will be doing trans transmission no no i hand over to the product to the intermediate but suddenly i got a information that the buyer uh, is in a intention to not to give a money to me or he himself the buyer is self telling me that i'm sorry i could not able to pay the remaining money or it will take a long time to give a money because the cost of the whole product is 1 lakh rupees he has given a only 10000 rupees by believing that i have transferred the goods i hand over the goods to the intermediate but after that only i comes to know that he is no he is not going to pay the remaining amount in such case what can i do either i can make a call to the intermediate i can stop the transition that is called stoppage of goods i can stop the transition of the goods i can ask the goods return back to my uh, warehouse i can uh, or else i can direct to direct the intermediate to sell these goods to somebody else who has paid the money okay or what i can do so in what situation it will occur when the buyer become insolvent by insolvent means when the person is not in a position to pay a debt when the person is not position to pay a money that is called as a buyer become insolvent 
So next one, where, where we can broadly classify the rights of unpaid seller under the following two categories: rights against the goods, rights against the buyer personality. Now we are seeing the rights against the goods. What is the right of land? What do you mean land? Land means the right to keep the portion of the goods until the seller receives the due price. For example, same from Tiruchi, I got a call from one customer. He booked a product around one lakh rupees. He has given only ten thousand rupees. I informed clearly to the buyer, sir, at least you have to pay 75 percentage of the amount. Then only I can transfer the goods. He said, please wait for two days. I will give you the product. Okay. So product price. So I have waited for uh, two days. I have not received the price. In this case, what I will do? I will keep the portion of the goods with me. Right up line in the sense, keeping the position of the goods until the seller receives the money. That is called right to line of the goods. Okay. So especially it is applicable at the time when the goods is transferred based on some stipulation. Stipulation means some condition on credit transfer. Okay. In case if the period i told you know he has asked two days time in the two days he is not going to pay money then uh, i can withhold the goods that means right right of claim so it follows based on some credit basis as well as the condition basis so some uh, real time example i have given here in grivis versus richard in 1877 the seller had delivered a portion of uh, three bags of teas under a contract sale but had not been paid for the rest. Therefore, they could keep the remaining unit of a tea lease till they pay a remaining amount. This is one of the examples for right of late. This one we have seen that. Next. Now, now rights against the buyer personality. personally. Here, the buyer, he bought a product. The portion of the goods is gone to the seller hand, sorry, buyer hand. I transfer the goods, the product position of the goods, the title, the ownership of the goods is transferred to the buyer hand. Okay, now I comes to know that he is not going to pay money or he is not in a position to give a money, either intentionally or not intentionally, whatever may be the case. So now what are the things I can do? Either I can suit for a price, that means I can ask him to pay a money Okay, if he regular, uh, neglect or refuse, no, I can suit up price. That means I can file a case against the particular buyer for a price. Those These kind of a things will occur for the major transaction, commercial purpose. Maybe if they have wholesaler, retailer contract, credit-based transaction, uh, which cost around maybe the 50 lakhs, one, you know, one crore transaction like that. Suit for damages for non-acceptance. So in case where the buyer wrongfully neglected, refused to accept the goods, pay for the goods, the seller may sue him for damages and non-acceptance of goods. What do you mean with this? For example, uh, I have uh, got a call from Kerala to transfer my goods. I am a wholesaler of uh, one particular goods in Chennai. I got a call from Kerala. He has given only the 25% of the part of the value of the goods. By believing this, okay, fine, I transfer the goods. The transport because the transport delivery delivery charge also carries on my head since the volume of you know order of goods volume is high so I bear the delivery charges also as a seller so the goods is in a transaction mode I hand over the goods to the carrier person he has transferred the goods to the particular buyer in a specified place a specified address but what happened now he is refusing to accept it but he is refusing to accept it he is not accepting the goods so ultimately what will happen the full loss will uh, comes on seller head in that situation the seller can suit for damages for non acceptance suit for damages for repudiation of the contract repudiation means cancellation of the contract same example same example the buyer has given an order, he has given some part of the amount by believing that I ordered the goods somewhere from another wholesaler. I took all the product into my warehouse. Now I'm about to deliver to the goods to the particular buyer. That time I got a call from the buyer that I'm sorry, I'm canceling this contract. What will happen? It will create a loss to the seller. 
So what he can do, he can suit for damages for the repetition of the cancel. Contract repetition means what? Cancellation. Suit for interest. The seller may sue the buyer for interest or special damages, even if the breach of contract while they suing for amount awaited for that. What do you mean by this? For example, the cost of a product is five lakhs. He has given only fifty thousand. He had to give me four lakh five the four lakh fifty thousand. Ah, yeah, four lakh fifty thousand. He has asked for six months of time, but in the past six months he has not at all turned up. I have given a real lot of remaining calls, remaining calls. I have given a lot of notice. I have sent a person, a lot of mail. Everything has done from my part of side. He is utilizing my product, but he has not given a four lakh fifty thousand rupees. What he is agreed to pay to me within a six months. So in this case, what can, what the seller can do? So so the seller can suit for the damages along with the interest because four lakh four lakh fifty thousand he has to give me right. So, so in this case, he can suit for interest for the amount also for the father, uh, for the past six months. Okay, that's all. Rights of unpaid solo. So almost we have seen this all the topics. See here, we have seen all the topic in this. Okay, let's move on this. The last top no another two topic is here. The last topic, Kevi Temper. So this is a very much important topic. What is called Kevi Tempter? Kevi Tempter is a Latin term that means let the buyer be aware. As similar to the face sold us in terms, it means the buyer assume the risk that their product may fail to meet expectations, have defects. In other word, the principle of Kevi Tempter serve as a warning that buyer have no resource with the seller if the product does not meet their expectation. So they may ask you in a primer, what is called Kevi Tempter? So Kevi Tempter means what? Let the buyer be aware. Being a buyer, we supposed to be very aware. Even though the seller uh, is having some description, you no, know, uh, we used to see right. Whenever we buy a product, especially when we buy a pharmaceutical product, we used to see, we used to search, uh, we we used to check the MRP as well as a uh, manufacturing date. Okay. Uh, expiry date we used to see. Then what are the description? Especially when we buy some tonic or some other pharmaceutical product, we used to see uh, how many milligram of a medicine it is. Uh, Two fifty gram mg or five hundred mg. Because uh, based on the age category, the mg's consumptions also varies. Okay, sometimes that itself, in the package itself, they might be clearly mentioned the dosage to be given to the patient. Two spoon, one spoon, three days, uh, three times per day, one time per day. Then, like that, they will be given certain instruction. You should not, uh, you should not keep this medicine uh, in the under the sunshine. You should not keep it outside. It should supposed to be stored in a cool place. Like that, we used to get certain, uh, you know, some instruction on the description box. Sometimes some small slip of papers also will be inserted inside the box. But most of the customers will not read it. So. What is called Kevi Tempter? Let the buyer be aware. As a buyer, we supposed to be aware whenever we buy any kind of a product and utilize the product. Okay, because we should make sure that the particular product not carries any defect, as well as it should fulfill the expectation. That is very much important. The Kevi Tempter causes ignorance, not tipped to empty. That means let the purchase be aware. Okay, for for you. For your ignorance, not debit quote just alumnic emit. So this term represent let the buyer be aware for he bought not to be ignorant of the nature of the property which he is buying from the another part. Expectations to the rules of Kevi Tempter. So what kind of a rules is there under the Kevi Tempter? When the buyer put the concern mind of the seller and give a reason to the Buy goods and relies on the skills of the seller. The goods comes under the following course of action: the seller business. Then it becomes the duty of the seller to deliver the reasonable and fit goods to the buyer. That's what whenever we buy gas cylinder, whenever especially we have to be very careful. Whenever we receive a gas cylinder from the uh, agent, we have to check whether the gas is getting leakage or not. We have to check whether it's properly sealed. Okay. So whenever we buy a product, we have to see that. Whenever we buy a medicines, uh, 
pharmaceutical product, product we have to see whether it's a, is it in an open condition or closed condition, whether the expiry date is, is good or not. Whatever consumable product we buy, we have to check the MRP date. But some sellers, you know, uh, some sellers to increase the sales, they are selling it in an offer price, one plus one offer. If you buy three, two extra, all uh, 200 rupees price uh, product is only 50 rupees, they will be giving a lot of advertisement there. To increase their sales, they will be giving a lot of false advertisement, false statement on that. So being a buyer, we have to be very aware. So seller just like that, they will not give you any kind of, uh, uh, you know, discounts offer and all. There will be some uh, reasons behind it. We should understand. Some seller really, to clear the stocks, they will give you. Uh, and then some sellers, they, there is a lot of chance for misuse it. So we have to be very careful whenever we buy any kind of a product. We have to cross verify all the descriptions. When the seller sold the goods by using a sample, if the sample goods does match with the actual goods, already we have seen that. Then when a goods sold with the help of the both the description and sample, goods match with the sample, but not with the description. I told you what is called description already. When the seller sold the goods by fraud or misrepresentation to the buyer, sometime, in online purchase, it will occur. You know, online purchase, some of the uh, uh, well reputed sites like Amazon, Flipkart, or some other sites, and all they are selling uh, goods in a proper way. They are maintaining that uh, uh, customer satisfaction. Uh, they are not giving any false statements. There are certain fake advertisement uh, uh, portal is there. Fra you know, uh, some. For the power, intentionally to cheat customers, they are creating a website, they are posting the, some catalog of the product. This saree is only 100 rupees, 200 rupees, 300 rupees. By, you know, once once you view the product catalog on the laptop or the mobile, it will be very good. But once you order it, once you pay the amount, uh, once you pay the amount, once you receive the product, and, uh, once you receive the product, you will be shocked whether this is the product what i ordered you you know like that we itself will get some confused okay such a way they are doing a fraudulent activity we have to be very careful in there are certain uh, sites they are giving a instruction that no cash on delivery is available okay so we have to be very careful with those sellers so it is a duty of the buyer. We have to be very careful whenever we buy a product. That is called a heavy temper. Last topic, goods. What is called goods? Goods are defined to mean every type of movable property other than actionable clients and money. The term comprises stock and share, rising crops, grass, and things attached to do and forming part of the land, which are agreed to be served for the sale under the contract of sale. See, before uh, initially, there was uh, cash only considered, I told you, cash only considered as a one of the main element of the essential element of the content. But now later on, they have added the stock, share, rising crops, grass, things, everything under the category of goods. So, usually under the sale of goods ad, the movable properties only will be taking a part. The not movable, immovable property will not consider under the sale of goods ad. Kinds of goods, let's see one by one. Existing goods. So, what is called existing goods? Whenever you go to the shop, once you pay your money, immediately once you buy a product which is available, that is called existing, which is available, which is available. That is called existing goods. You want to buy a biscuits and you went to the shop, the same was available there. So here biscuits will be called as an existing goods. What product you want that is available in a particular shop, you went over there, you gave a product, uh, product price and you received it. That is called existing goods. Next, what is called specified goods? Uh, these are the goods which will be recognized and agreed upon through the parties at the time of a contract of sale. For instance, uh, or a specified wa watching or car. Example, see here, you want to buy a go uh, good day biscuit. See, specific in the sense, specifically you are saying the particular brand of the product of the goods and if it is available, you are paying a money and getting getting the product. That is called specific goods. You want to buy the product, uh, 
the good day biscuit went to the shop paid for it and taken the delivery so here the good day biscuit will be called as a specific goods because you are saying the brand of the product and uh, once it's available you are paying a money and getting it that is called as a specific goods then what is called ascertained goods though normally used as synonyms for the specific goods the ascertained goods are planned to contain goods which have become ascertained subsequently to the formation of the contract so lord actin observed that ascertained almost certainly means that means rather than let's see example for c whenever students you study the law if you could not able to understand the terminology what is mentioned over there first read the examples which is given below once you read the examples you could able to connect with the particular terminology what they are trying to say now see it is what is ascertained goods example you want to buy good good day biscuit and went to the shop paid for it and later on after paying it paying for it you decided to buy oreo biscuit so here this will be the case of ascertained goods because the change is getting done after the sales transaction of after payment is made now can you able to understand what is ascertained goods you made the payment for the particular goods specific goods but before receiving the product you are changing your product that is called ascertained goods because there are clumps of uh, you know lump sum of products are available uh, sometime you want to test up with uh, some new other product that is called as a ascertained goods <coughs> unascertained goods see the example first you want to buy any biscuit from a large variety of a biscuit and available in the available sorry available in the shop so this will be the case of unascertained goods as you are ready to buy any brand from the large variety of available it is not certain that which brand you get the goods are bulk not separate yet do you are able to understand in ascertained goods in the sense the goods are separated separated and displayed as per the brand by so when you buy the good day biscuit you paid for it you saw the oreo biscuit over there on a display you are buying that is called ascertained goods in unascertained goods there are plenty of biscuit brands are available everything was in the stand when you go and approach you want biscuit but you did not mention what kind of a brand you want the shopkeeper also you are giving 10 uh, 10 rupees and you are asking biscuit in the sense that shopkeeper may give you any kind of a biscuit which is cost around 10 rupees that is called unascertained goods when you are not specifying any kind of a brand if you are if you want to buy a, only the biscuit with the cost of so and so the shopkeeper will be giving the product which is there related to a match to the particular uh, amount what you have given then future goods so what is called future goods as per the act future goods means the goods to be manufactured for the produced acquired through the seller after the creation of the contract of sale therefore the future goods are which either are not in the subsistence at the time of a contract sale they may be subsistent with the agreement of the sale entered upon but have yet been acquired through seller throughout the time what do you mean by this see a goes to buy a bike on 11th april 2020 at the showroom and made the payment but a was promised to deliver the bike on 15th may 2020 due to its unavailability of right now so here the goods will be existent in future it will be called as a future goods can you understand it is also called as a agreement to sale so what is called future goods when the goods will be transferred in a future due to the requirement of the customer see if the goods is available in a shop the shop people will be ready to give you for example i am uh, mr a is visiting a showroom bike showroom he saw one bike he saw only blue color bike over there then the particular model what he likes but he needs a red color so he was asking the shop keeper sir i need a red color bike sir then he said sir only blue color is available in this model are you okay with the model he said yeah okay i am okay with the model but i need only the red color then he said yeah okay please yes and you do a payment everything uh, and after 15 days we will give you the red color model bike we will import from somewhere then we will give you the red color model this is called future goods so the future goods means agreement to sale the sales will occur in the future okay so uh, you may take like crops and some other things also which is going to occur in a future contingent good what is called contingent goods contingent goods are the goods acquisition of which through the seller 
uh, depends on depends upon the contingency which may or may not happen. For instance, A agreed to sell three. Yeah, sure. Sorry, A agreed to sell two three. Yeah, sure. Painting only. If C presents over, sell to him. Here, the quantities for the sale is the contingent goods as the availability of the painting depends on the sales to C. Do you understand? For example. One customer is visiting my shop. I am having one shop. There I am having different different painting. There uh, one customer he likes one painting. He asks that who who uh, who has painted it. Then uh, as a seller I said no. This so and so person has painted this. No, oh, this is so good. This is very neat. It is having very professionalism in this painting. So uh, could you ask him to paint as per my requirement? He asked. Then I said, "Okay, fine. I will talk with him. I will ask him to do for this." So this is called contingent goods. Why? Because it may or may not happen. I even though I entered in a contract with a particular buyer, by believing that C will paint for him, we can't say surely that he whether the painter will draw a paint for him or not. That is called contingent goods. Another example. See. The yeah, milkman agreed to sell five liters of milk, provided a cow yields the milk. This will be called a contract of contingency goods, as it depends on the conditions of cow yielding milk. If uh, cow yield and milk, then sale will be completed. If cow don't yield the milk, then sale will not be completed. So what do you mean by this? The yeah, milkman, one milkman person who is having cow, he agreed in a contract with one seller, buyer. Uh, I will give you the five liter of milk once he yield the cow. Uh, in Tamil, they used to say kadumbal, you know. Uh, so once yield the cow, because we cannot able to say surely whether the cow after yielding the, you know, calf whether he is it's going to give a milk uh, up to five liter or not. So when the uh, goods is in a doubtful manner to deliver, that is called contingent goods. When you cannot able to give any kind of any kind of a surety whether the goods will be transferred or not, that is called contingent goods. Last one, transfer of ownership, uh, ownership and property. A person may be in the portion of the goods, but he may not be the owner of the goods. For instance, agent, servant, bailey may be in the portion of goods, but it is not the owner of a because transfer of property in the goods does not invest in. So whenever uh, we accept any kind of a Uh, product deliver the as a seller we should ask the seller buyer where we have to deliver at what time we have to deliver so that we have to make sure then we have to transfer the ownership of the goods that's all the sale of goods at over so students so in this sale of goods at we have covered all the topic as i told you what is sales who is a seller who is a buyer what are the three types of sales what are the essential elements of sales uh, what is called i hire purchase Sales and agreement to sale. What are the difference between sales and agreement to sales? Sales and hire purchase. What is called condition and warranty? What is the difference between condition and warranty? What are the types of condition and warranty? Who is called as an unpaid seller? What are the rights of unpaid seller? And then who is called KV tempter? What are the rules to be followed under the KV tempter? What is called goods? What are the different types of goods? Almost I have covered all the topic. i hope so that this session will be helpful for you so please kindly go through all the videos so if you like this video please do subscribe as well as uh, the previous classes link will be posted in a description box please stay tuned stay with us thank you